Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part two to my Isabel Bedoya and Eden the Doll video. I just got my computer back and it feels so good. However, there was actually a lot more to include than I remember, so I apologize, but there's gonna have to be a part three to this saga. I know it sucks, but due to the volume of receipts in combination with the timing of my tech issues, it is what it is. I feel like if I'm gonna cover a story, I wanna be thorough and include absolutely everything. And as of yesterday, receipts were still rolling in, so a three-part series it is. To make it up to you guys, I'll include a little KKW beauty giveaway at the end of this video. Anyway, if you haven't seen part one, I highly suggest watching it prior to this video as you'll be completely lost otherwise. I'll leave the link to that in the description box below, but let's jump right into part two. Okay, so we left off at Pure and Boxy Charm sending Isabel to her room where she was to stay until they found her an early flight home. The night of the fight, Eden advises that she went to her room super upset thinking that everything had been ruined for her with respect to any potential future jobs or opportunities due to this altercation with Isabel. Turns out she woke up the next day to the comfort and support of the brands as well as the other influencers who attended on the trip. Eden indicates that for the remainder of the trip she tried to enjoy herself and make the best of the situation. Prior to Isabel's early departure from the trip, she went on Snapchat saying that she was stuck in her room, which she ended up having to delete due to a breach of contract with the brands. When Eden arrived home, the altercation was the talk of the beauty industry. Every influencer knew about it and she was bombarded by DMs from people asking questions about the situation. Now, just so you guys know, this entire time Eden was under the impression that Isabel attempted to fight her because she was briefly speaking to her husband, as I indicated in part one. She had no idea of any potential cheating rumors. Anyway, a week after the trip, Eden wakes up and and looks at Malik's phone. She finds a text from one of his female co-workers saying, oh my god, I had so much fun last night. Miss you. So Eden texts the girl back baiting her saying, miss you too. Did you like last night? The co-worker responds back saying, quote, she loved it. Eden then spends the entire day packing up Malik's stuff. When he woke up at 5 p.m., Eden told him that he had to leave because of the text she found. They talk about it and he convinces her that the co-worker was just a friend. However, that led to more arguments and they basically ended up breaking up due to a variety of reasons. That said, being that the dude didn't have a pot to piss in and only $10 to his name, he had to stay with Eden even though they were broken up. That lasted for approximately one and a half to two weeks. Thinking that space could possibly benefit the relationship, which would enable them to work things out, Eden finds and pays for an apartment for Malik, only to discover that one week later, Malik is on Instagram posting videos of himself with the co-worker sleeping on his lap. So at this point, we're at two weeks post-brand trip and Eden has to fly out to New York to attend BeautyCon as a work obligation. Coincidentally, the weekend of BeautyCon would have also been hers and Malik's two-year anniversary. Anyway, Eden attends BeautyCon New York day one with Edgar of Edgar's Makeup on Instagram, who is also on the Pure and BoxyCharm brand trip. So they're hanging out together at the Influencer Lounge at BeautyCon, and Eden sees Isabel looking at her from across the room. I am, I don't know what to think, but like in my head, I'm just like, oh my gosh, here we go. Like this, if this bitch comes up to me and tries to fight me here, she like makes eye contact with me and she like laughs and smiles. And I'm just like, like, I'm just like a small back. I'm like, fucking bitch. And um, that was it. That's all like that I saw of her. Following BeautyCon, there was an after party where Eden ran into Isabel once again. This time, Isabel approaches Eden. Here's the footage of Isabel walking up to confront Eden, followed by the footage of them talking. <laughs> this time she comes up to me and like and literally like like oh my god like like as it's you're walking up to him just like oh my gosh here we go and um she comes up to me and she like tells me like listen like i i guess this is kind of hard for me but i i need to apologize and i'm just like oh like this was like literally a hundred like the last thing i was expecting i was expecting her to like to literally try to fight start another fight and i'm just like Oh, like, okay. And then she's like, look, I was so drunk. But I'm going to tell you the truth of what really happened. And I'm like, like well, I'm like, what, what really happened? You're not still with Matt, like, are you? And I'm just like, no, we, like, we broke up, like, two weeks ago. And <sighs> she's like, well, listen. 
um, he, he's a piece of shit, and the truth is, we hooked up the whole time during the trip, he was trying to get at me, and we hooked up, and, like, literally, I'm just, like, looking at her, like, you're such a fucking liar, like, you're just trying to get me more pissed off, like, what, what are you doing, and I'm, like, do you have the tax, do you have proof, and she's, like, yeah, I have proof, and I'm just, like, what, and, like, she literally, like, um, we walked to, like, a corner, and she's, like, what's his number, and I type it in her phone, and the, the, lo and behold, our tax, and, um, I'm like, can I go? I mean, can we go to the restroom? I I can barely speak. Can we go to the restroom? And she's like, yeah. We go to the restroom, and she and I'm like, can I read it? She says yes. And um, she basic like I basically get her phone and I start reading the text. And um, turns out that the day I wasn't there, um, they had like I guess like sat next to each other because her her boyfriend or whatever wasn't there either. And, um, we met, and Malik was trying to get at her the whole night, and, and, um, they ended up, like, you know, like, they ended up, like, hooking up while I was in Mexico, sleeping at the airport, wondering why he's not texting me back. He's fucking hooking up with her. Okay, so let's stop there for now and match everything up. So as Eden was saying the night she spent eight hours in Mexico City waiting for her flight to Punta Mita, Malik and Isabel sat next to each other at the welcoming dinner as you can see in this screenshot taken from Raw Beauty Christie's vlog. As Eden indicated in her video, Isabel's husband also arrived a day late to the trip. Interestingly, an insider told me that Joe, who is the CEO of BoxyCharm, saw Isabel and Malik off by themselves making out while he was walking back to his room on the first night. Being that Eden wouldn't arrive until the next day, Joe hadn't made the connection of who Malik was with as the brands were mostly focused on making connections with the influencers at this point and making sure that everyone was taken care of. It wasn't until after Eden arrived and the fight went down that Joe realized what he saw. Another point of interest is that as I mentioned in part one, there was only a 15 hour gap between Malik and Eden's arrival at the resort. So within 15 hours, Malik managed to meet and hook up with Isabel while his girlfriend was sleeping in an airport all because as luck would have it, she happened to check him in first for a trip he was only invited on because of her. Pig. Not to mention, they were either hooking up in Eden's room or Isabel's room, which they then shared with their partners once they arrived at the resort. Think about that. Anyway, back to BeautyCon and the after party. Eden is still in the restroom reading through the texts on Isabel's phone. I just started scrolling through the texts, and he's texting her even after I arrived, and he's texting her every single day that we're there trying to hook up with her again, trying to hook up with her again while I'm there. And, like, <laughs> I'm just, like, so, um, and I'm just trying to keep my composure as I'm reading these texts, and I'm just, like, trying not to, like, try to act cool. And, um, it's all making fucking sense. And it's making me, and it's making sense why she attacked me. When Eden says it's all making sense to her now, remember, up until this point, she was under the impression that Isabel attacked her in Mexico because she was briefly speaking with her husband. Come to find out that Isabel was fucking Eden's boyfriend and the whole talking to my man BS was Isabel simply deflecting from her own behavior. I'm trying my hardest to keep my cool and to act like it's not bugging me. And she's like, can we bury the hatchet? Can we be cool? Like, I'm, like she's like basically telling me she's sorry. And I'm just like, yes, girl, we're fine. Don't worry about it. Let's go outside and let everyone know that we're cool. And um, this is like when it starts to hit me that like, I'm like, I need to basically, I need to basically like let her believe that like I'm on her side. Because she's telling me that like all the brands don't want to work with her and like this is happening and like I need to make this fucking dumb bitch believe I'm on her side so I can get more tea and I can get these screenshots because these screenshots are important. Um, we go outside and we start to drink and we start to like, basically hang out together. Everyone, the moment like we left the room together, everyone was just like shocked that we were walking out together and that's when it started to hit me too. Like I'm like, wait, did everyone else know about this? But me, is this why people think there was a fight was because of this? Like, 
it all just starts to hit me and I'm just like, oh my god, everyone in this fucking room is so fucking fake. This whole fucking time, no one fucking told me shit. And there were multiple people there and no one saw. So I also find that interesting. Either the other influencers who attended on the trip didn't see anything go down between Isabel and Malik, or they did see but felt uncomfortable saying anything to Eden. I'm going to assume the latter because how would the news have spread throughout the beauty industry if nobody on the trip knew? Anyway, Eden decides that in order to obtain the proof, i.e. screenshots from Isabel for her own records, she'd have to befriend Isabel and make her believe that she was going to help her by putting on a united front and throwing Malik under the bus. Eden and Isabel hang out at the after party and get drunk together. From the after party, they take an Uber to a different club and that's where Eden puts her plan in motion as seen here. And I get this bitch drunk. Um, I ask her to let me see her phone again. There's so many fucking texts, but as long as I get that first text screenshot, I'm good. I sent it to myself. Mission accomplished. Second mission. Let's fucking face him, him on her phone. I cannot, I cannot let this fucking I cannot let this fucking person play me. I can't let him get away with this. I've never in my life been that mad and had to think of a plan that quickly. And we were in the Uber and told her, hey, girl, why don't you call him? Let's call him. Like, I'm going to help you get your name. I'm going to help you tell all the brands that it's not, wasn't your fault. Like, I'm going to help you get. And she's like, oh, my gosh. Like, yes. Like, I'm like, I, I need you to do this for me. The dumb bitch face on him. He answers, she's like, what are you doing? Let's hook up, let's hang out. And then this fucking idiot <sighs> says, yes, I record it. I'll play it right now. Says, I, I, I gotta see your face, huh? You're... What are you doing? Not work. What are you doing? I'm at work. What's going on with you? Oh, wow. Are you down to hang out? You in LA? Yeah. Yeah, so you want to see my mom's place? Wait, are you still with Eden? No, he broke up like a month ago. Alright, where? Then we good. Are you still with your man? Nah, we've been out. Oh, hi, Barry. Hi. So, I hope you're excited for me to expose you on Instagram and on YouTube and everywhere for yeah. all the fucking dumb shit that you are. You fucking worthless piece of shit. Oh, <laughs> fucking no. dumb. Oh, I'm fucking yeah. dumb. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't shit. He ain't shit. When Seedon got what she needed being the first page of Isabel and Malik's text messages and the recorded FaceTime call, she excused herself from Isabel and company and went back to her hotel. So here's a screenshot of the conversation between Isabel and Malik while they were in Mexico that Eden sent herself from Isabel's phone. Malik says, I literally puked my guts out just now. Isabel says, did your girl get here yet? Malik replies and says, yeah, with an eye roll emoji. Isabel says, lol, I just woke up. Was I really fucked up at the party last night? I kind of forget the ending. No, Isabel, you just had a random dick in your vag, no big deal. Malik says, you were lit and so was everybody else, so you're good. Isabel says, okay, cool, you want to go to the pool later? I'll be your girl's friend, lol. Malik says, as long as I can be around you. Isabel says, lol, stop, always gassing me. Even though Eden had this screenshot and the recorded FaceTime call, she continued to press Isabel for further screenshots after they hung out, as you can see in this conversation between the two. Eden texts Isabel saying, have you talk to him, followed by, if you want to help me clear your name and expose him, sending me all the texts would really help. You can do this to your text so you don't look bad in just him. I can say you weren't comfortable showing yours, but wanted to give me his. Eden included an example of what she meant by, you can do this to your text, showing that she could block out her responses leaving his visible. Isabel responds and says, nah, he hasn't called or texted. My manager doesn't think it's a good look. I can send you one where he says things. Eden replies saying, yeah, just anything 
anything of him. You can block out your texts. Need confirmation, etc. Izaho goes on to include a redacted text between herself and Malik, which we'll read through and discuss when we get to Isabel's response to Eden's video, as Isabel ended up posting the entire context of their conversation in an effort to clear her name after the affair was publicized. Anyway, the day after Eden finds everything out, she's at the airport getting ready to return home from New York, when she receives a notification from YouTube that Malik has uploaded a 20 minute video entitled My Side of the Story, where he confesses to cheating on Eden. That's the next thing I want to talk about, is this rumor and about me cheating and, you know, being faithful. And if you look at my comics section, it's all over the place and people are DMing me their support and <laughs> showing me all this love and saying how I'm a nice guy and all this and that and it's amazing and I really appreciate it. To all those people who are supporting me and, and showing me love, I just want to say thank you. But I'm going to have to ask you to stop, please. Because it's true. I, um... I cheated. I'm... I'm not proud of it at all. Um, the girl meant nothing. Purely coincidence. Um, when Eden and I went to Mexico, there was a, um, there was some, I'm sorry, there's like, if you hear any background, my roommate's in the other room with his girlfriend. Um, but Eden wasn't able to get on the flight immediately when we went to Mexico. And I ended up having a night in Mexico by myself. Um, I won't really go into details. I'm not gonna expose the other person. Mainly because you guys probably wouldn't believe me. Um, she has like 2.5, 2.6 million followers. And like, I deleted all the texts and proofs because I'm a scumbag. <laughs> Thinking I was gonna get away with it. I played stupid and tried to pretend like I didn't. I even went on social media and started posting stuff on my story saying how I apparently cheated, even though I, I know I did. I know I did. And I still, because I thought I could get away with it. What's interesting about this video is that he made it as if he had anyone aside from Eden to address. He's not a social media influencer with a large following. In fact, it was Eden who gave him the platform he had. The only person he owed any type of apology or confession to was Eden after the embarrassment and humiliation he caused her at her job. If he truly felt any type of remorse for his actions, he would have apologized to her privately, which is what she deserved. The real reason he uploaded this video was to beat Eden to the punch and expose himself before she spilled the tea, making him look like the asshole that he is after watching the video i texted him for the first time after he moved out and i told him he had to delete it he had to delete his channel he had to delete everything that i gave him because if he wants that if he wants this career if he wants this life he has to earn it and i'm not gonna let myself be used by someone just because they love the limelight they love the following so I'm going to leave the text between Eden and Malik up where she tells him to delete everything associated with her if you want to pause the video to read it, but I think this is a good spot to stop the video. In part 3, we'll discuss Isabel's reaction to everything and that will be it for this saga, but as promised, I'll be giving away the KKWX Mario Classic K Cream Lipstick and Juicy Gloss together as a bundle and all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on this video with your opinion on the situation along with your Instagram or Twitter handle so that I can get a hold of you if you win and that is it. I'll be choosing the winner on Wednesday, May 9th, so good luck, you guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Here for the T2. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon in part three. Bye.